Hello and good morning friends. Welcome to the fourth Advent candle, which is love. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 89 and I'll be reading from verse 1 to 4 and from verse 19 to 26. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known. Through all generations, I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in the heavens itself. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations. Verse 19 to 26. Once you spoke in a vision to your faithful people, you said, I have bestowed strength on a warrior. I have raised up a young man from among the people. I have found David, my servant. With my sacred oil, I have anointed him. My hand will sustain him. Surely my arm will strengthen him. The enemy will not get the better of him. The wicked will not oppress him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down his adversaries. My faithful love will be with him. And through my name, his horn will be exalted. I will set his hand over the sea, his right hand over the rivers. He will call out to me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are our father, the rock, our savior. We come into your holy presence this day with thanksgiving in our hearts, with praise on our lips. We come to honor you, we come to adore you, we come to magnify you, King of the universe. And our Abba Father, Lord, we stand in your presence to thank you for everything that you have done for us. Father, for protection, for deliverance, for healing, for sanctification, God, for encouragement in the time of need. Lord, our God, you have made everything perfect and in your own time you have made all things beautiful we thank you lord that in your name we can do all things with you on our side and with the holy spirit as our guide we your servants live to worship and to honor you every day of our lives in jesus name we pray with thanksgiving amen Please um, take your Bibles out if, if, if you have them close by. Our readings today come from a number of places. The first reading comes from 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 7 verses 1 to 11. Let us hear the words of the Lord. God's promise to David. After the king was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it for the Lord is with you. By that night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, go and tell my servant David. This is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say 
to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel? Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The third reading comes from Luke's Gospel. And it's Luke 1, verses 26 to 38. Let us listen to the words of the Lord. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth to a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked. The angels, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Let us pray. O oh, faithful God, the Lord who keeps his word, mighty and awesome, compassionate and loving, the God of the whole universe, Father, Abba, we come before you this day with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come to magnify you once again. Thank you, Lord, for your word which has come out with so much power because there, there is power in your word. Father, as we meditate on the words, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will take over this moment and that you will be exalted. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Great is he in all the earth. Friends, why do we love him so much? We love him because he first loved us. We love him 
because he put his Holy Spirit within us to grant us the power to be able to love him and to love others who are also made in his image. We love him because he has been long suffering towards us. We love him because he has not treated us as we deserve. We love him because he always forgives us when we go before him and we confess our sins. He is just and faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. In the passages that I read, we see the loving kindness of God on display. Friends, as far back as a thousand years before Jesus was born, David, the man of God, had decided after God had blessed him and after God had protected him from all his enemies and fought his battles for him, David wanted to do something for God. He asked that Nathan, the prophet, allow him to build a magnificent house of cedar for, for God, for the Ark of the Covenant to be put in into this beautiful, magnificent place. But the Lord's words to him were, David, I am the one who called you from being a shepherd and I made you the ruler over Israel. Have I ever asked you to build me a house? Hallelujah. Sometimes in our humanity, we want to do something for God. We just want to do something. And sometimes, in doing things, we forget to give the biggest treasure of all, which is our hearts. Friends, the Lord wants to live in your heart. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords invites you to open your heart so that he can come and live in it. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hears me and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him. I will come in and fellowship with him. Because friends, human love can be so limited. Human love can be transactional. Human love can be based on what we can get from each other. Human love can even be fake. And we, the ones who love, think that we have done something special. And yet still, God searches our hearts. God looks deep, deep within, and he's not pleased. Friends, as we light the love candle, let us aspire by the power of the Holy Spirit to allow God to love through us. Because I don't trust my own heart, I pray, Heavenly Father, love others through me. Because left to me, my love will always fall short. Lord, love others through me. Forgive others through me. Touch others through me. Because I am the circumcision and I do not trust in myself. I know what is within me. I know what is within me and therefore I surrender. I give everything to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and I ask that he might love through me. People of God, as we light the love candle, let us remember that is not by our human endeavor that we enter. It's not by, 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 by what we have or who we are or how holy we think we are that we come into the presence of God. No, it's by his grace that we enter. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. You are the only one who loves. You are the only one who understands true love. And you are the one who allows people to love. So Father, we give you our hearts afresh. Lord, we confess that we've done everything in order to love and we have failed. And Lord, we ask that you would give us the love, agape love, that comes from the Holy Spirit, that we might be able to love as you expect us to love. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. 
Amen. And now to the King, immortal, invisible, and, and to the only true God, our Savior, be every praise, every honor, every glory. May the Lord our God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing lacking. Amen. Be blessed in Jesus' name.